Hey guys, today we're going to be making beef tallow. We use beef suet to do that. You can use beef fat. You get it at the butcher. Um, ranges from $1.99 to $3.29 a pound. It's pretty cheap compared to buying a jar of tallow. That's like $15. So today we're going to show you how to make it. So you can just chop it up and put it in a pot or you can chop it and put it in a food grinder for the KitchenAid and that's what we're using today. It goes a lot faster. Um, this is the food grinder that I use. It's just the plastic one. It's the cheapest option. If I had researched more, I would have got the metal one because it also has the attachments to do sausage. So this is what it looks like after the grinder. It'll cook down way faster this way than just chopping it. Now, if you don't have a grinder, you can totally chop, totally fine. I'll do both. This is kind of what you're looking for if you're chopping it up. The smaller, the faster it cooks. So if you're wondering the difference between like beef fat and beef suet, uh, this is a good example of the suet. It is more hard and waxy than beef fat. Um, it's located on a different part of the cow and it creates a harder tallow at room temperature. Uh, both work just fine. You definitely want to make sure you get as much of the meat off of it and not cook that. It'll make it uh, less pure. So I'm gonna remove that. So I'm gonna get this pot going on the stove and get my second pot for the rest. And here is my second pot and we're gonna put them on the stove. Here you can see this one's just been on the burner for maybe less than 20 minutes and we've already got gold liquid. Here we are. Put them on the burners. Medium, medium high. That first. And this one is already cooking down. You don't want them to burn and you don't want them to boil so you will have to adjust the temperature as it starts to heat up. As you can see, this pot was really full when I filled it um, and it has cooked down significantly already. So I typically try and fit as much as I can in it because um, I'm typically doing a lot at one time. This is a lengthy process. It's not something I do every week. It's something I do every couple months. You can see here I've moved them to the back burner so they don't uh, overcook and stop, start boiling. The rear burners are a lot smaller. Just an update on how things are looking. So this is more of what we're looking for for when it's done. You can see most of these are almost like translucent. They might look like crispy. This one's almost done. There's still some chunks that are white. You can see that. You want them all to be kind of translucent looking. So while the tallow is still cooking down, I've got my jars ready. These are my favorite jars to use. They are wide mouth pints. Um, the tallow is really hard in this if you're using it for cooking or Seasoning your cast irons, um, you're usually going to have to take a butter knife and kind of scrape it out. So here's a jar that I've already made. The issue with the narrow mouths is you're sticking this in there and it's harder to get it out with a smaller mouth. So I prefer the wide mouth pints and I typically use these ball reusable um, plastic lids. They work really well um, even for freezing. Unfortunately I am out 
So I'll be using regular canning lids. And then we've got our metal funnel, a strainer, ladle, and cheesecloth for when we're ready to strain and jar the tallow. All right, so this smaller one is now done. You can see everything's nice and translucent, almost looks crispy. And we're gonna can this one up while the other one still simmers on the stove. So if you can see, I have my funnel, I have my strainer, and then I have a piece of cheesecloth on top. Now this is very hot, and we're putting it into a room temperature glass jar. So I just do a little bit at a time, let that jar heat up, and so it doesn't shatter. And I'm trying to avoid picking up as many chunks as I can. I'm trying to just strain out the liquid at first. This is what you're left with, just chunks. Okay, if you wanna get the most out of all of your beef fat to make tallow, um, I took all the scraps from the bottom of the pan and I put it over a large strainer with a large piece of cheesecloth and over a bowl. And I was able to gather quite a bit more tallow out of just the leftover bits. We should be able to pretty much fill up this last jar to make eight jars. And there we have it. We have eight full jars of tallow. Like I said at the store, one of these goes for about $15. Um, and like I said, it's about a pound per jar. And at the store, the butcher that I'm getting it, it's either $1.99 to $3.99 a pound for the beef squid. Um, way more affordable making it yourself than buying it at the store. Hello update. They are almost done. So here they are, they're cooled. We're gonna put them away in the fridge. And at first we're gonna put some lids on them. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate all the views. Let us know if you have any comments, concerns, or questions.